In this video, we will have a look at the new improved way of creating an app with Power BI and Fabric. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So here I am in the Power BI service and I'm in a workspace. Now suppose I wanted to share items such as reports. Well, I can either do that individually by clicking on the reports and then clicking on share, or I can package up several reports, including the semantic models and dashboards into an app. So if I click on create app, first of all, I need to enter my app name and a description. I can add an app logo and a theme color. And there's a few other settings such as expanding or collapsing the navigation pane by default. Then I can add content, either links, so hyperlinks, new sections to divide your content, or reports and dashboards. So if I just add a few reports and dashboards, I can then go into the third section, which is audience, and then say, who do I want to be able to see my app? And I can customize the app based on the audience. So I can hide certain pages, for instance. So if I publish this app to the entire organization, then my app is now published available for others to install. So I would go to the apps section and then go to get apps in the top right hand corner, find my app, and then install it. Now you'll notice if I go back that I can only have one app per workspace. So if I go back into my workspace, I've got update app. I can't create an additional app. Well, Microsoft have now announced a new type of app. This is the org app. So if I click on new item, here we can see the org app. So package and securely distribute content in your organization. Well, this sounds exactly what the traditional app does. So what's new? Well, if I click on org app, here we can see the first thing. I need a Microsoft Fabric capacity. So I'll click upgrade. And that gives me access to all of the capacity in Fabric, including the new org app. So I'm just going to call this Fabric org app and click create. Now, first of all, if I go back into my workspace, here is my Fabric Org app, and I can click new item and create another one. So I'm not required just to have one per workspace. So going back into my Fabric Org app, I can add content. So I can add a section and a link as before. I can add workspace content. However, when I click on this, you'll notice that I can also add notebooks and I can add real-time dashboards. So this expands what I can do with my apps. So this could be more useful for data scientists or people who want to see the result of data scientists' work. So if I click on a few reports and the notebook and click on add to app, here we can see the current app. Now, what I can also do is go into settings. And this allows me to change not just the name, but give it a sensitivity label and also endorse it, promote it or certify it. If I click on customize, then I can upload an image or a theme. And in navigation, I can turn off the app pane or the report pages pane. So this has been a highly requested feature. You don't necessarily wish to have this navigation on the left hand side. But if you don't have a navigation on the left hand side, how are people going to be able to access other pages? Well, you can do this with the new overview. So if I click on overview and I will call it overview, then you can see that this has created a list of all of the pages. So you could have this as a main page. So I will move it all the way to the top. And I can also add a header. So I will call this my fabric org app and the description, some reports and a notebook. And I will apply the app theme to this header. 
So now I can preview the app. So I can see what it will look like. So if I close this preview and customize it so that we don't have the app pane visible. So notice viewers will not be able to navigate between app items unless there is an overview pane. So yeah, that's fine. And click preview app. Now we don't have this pane on the left hand side. And I would click on individual items to view them and then click on my icon to go back to my overview. So having done this, I can click on share. So I need to save my changes first. So we'll click on save and share. And then I can say who I want to share this with. So once you have put in your users, you can click grant, but notice two additional things about this dialog box. First of all, there is an additional permission of share. So previously in the Power BI app, then only specific workspace roles can manage access and share the app. With the Fabric Org app, then I can have individual permissions to share. Also notice this at the bottom. People will be given read permission to the underlying semantic models for each item in this app. So previously, if semantic models were hosted in other workspaces, then access to those workspaces would need to be added manually. With the Fabric Org app, then permission to use these models is granted automatically. In addition, if I remove the app, then permissions for semantic models are also removed. So there's a lot of simplification happening. So I'll click on grant and you can see successfully granted permissions. Now, instead of preview app, it says view app. Instead of just a single share button, I've now got this menu. I can do things with the link to this app or app page and I can add additional people or groups and I can also manage access. So here you can see that Susan user has got the access to read and reshare. So if I click on the dot 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 to the right hand side, then you can see I can remove the reshare or remove access to Susan. Now another thing about this new Fabric Org app, when I add a report, then users will see the current version of the report. Now that is true for the Power BI app as well. However, what happens if I update the report? Say I put in a new pie chart. Well, with the Power BI app, the version of the report when I create or update the app is the version that end users will see. So it is versioned. So any changes to the report will not automatically be reflected in the Power BI app. The app would need to be updated. However, for the Fabric Org app, users will see the current version of the report. Also, for the Power BI app, we noticed that the app needed to be installed for people to be able to use it. However, that is not the case with the Fabric Org app. You may see it in other pages. For example, the browse page. Here we can see the Fabric Org app and I can just click on it just like I would any other item like a notebook or a report. It doesn't need to be installed. You just need to have permission to access the app. So the main disadvantage about the Fabric Org app is it requires Fabric. And so that could well be an additional cost if you don't have Fabric, if you've just got Power BI Pro or Premium but there is a lot of additional functionality. For example, adding notebooks and real-time dashboards. And clearly this is the way that Microsoft is developing the creation of apps. For more about how to use Power BI apps, then please go to our website, idodata.com and click on either fabric or reporting software and click on PL300, Microsoft Power BI Data Analyst. This includes part four, the Power BI service, which includes apps. For more about Fabric, then please go to our DP600 course, which includes an introduction to Microsoft Fabric, lake houses, data warehouses, and more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please click like, and why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. And if you've got suggestions for new videos, then let me know in the comments to this video. If you'd like to know some more features about Power BI, then please click on the video on the end link. 
this shows some advanced features beyond the PL300 exam. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.